Welcome, 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 everybody. How you doing? Good to see you all. This is Citizen Central, the monthly podcast going over Star Citizen, where we bring in a couple of guests and talk about some uh, Star Citizen stuff. This time I've got a good panel for you all. We've got people that you probably know, maybe a couple of folks you don't, you know, I, I don't think any of these people are really relevant, but I thought I'd bring them on the camera today and <laughs> talk a little bit about what we're expecting from CitizenCon coming up in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much for joining us. Like I said, this podcast is every month. We do it live here right on the YouTube and Twitch channel. And the good folks will give us uh, about an hour and a half, two hours of their day to hopefully give you a little more entertainment than I can bring you. Let's start out though with our guests. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, let's go from the top hand corner. Board Gamer, if you could introduce yourself, maybe what you do, we'll get right into this after we're done. Hello, I'm Board Gamer. I produce consistent, constant news content on Star Citizen. I suppose that's probably what I do. Uh, and I'm not allowed to swear. They are? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if, now, here. But, but if it's so British that the American people can't understand it, you're good, remember? I'm, I'm pretty sure that they'll understand the. The ah, feeling. Ah, they're Americans. <laughs> it will come across. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, board. Uh, always, a, always an honor to get to speak with you. You are the 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 central news source of of Star Citizen, in my opinion. So this should be some good opinions coming from you. That's not true. It's CIG. I just relay ninety nine percent of what they do. They wait, are wait, the wait. central. Source. I was I was told you work for CIG. Is that no? That's, 
that's not true. Oh, okay, okay. I'm <laughs> sorry. The money what? that I deserve if I, if I did work. <laughs> That's my money. They're withholding payment. Well, yeah, I heard you and Mike were working for this. I don't know. We have to figure it I out. I swear to God, if Mike is getting paid any money by CIG, I'm going to be okay. living. Don't tell him. <laughs> Ollie. Board, board gamers. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Avoid. Board gamers, the reason why the average star and cannot read. Hey, there it is. <laughs> we, we depend on videos. I it's a compliment. I, it's... <laughs> I mean, it, it is a compliment. It, it works. It is a compliment. Uh, Ollie43, my man. Welcome in. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Uh, where can... So tell us a little bit. Tell the folks a little bit about your content if they don't know who you are. Or maybe they do. And uh, your enthusiasm. Honestly, that's... I love your enthusiasm. Um, I'm looking for that in the show today. Okay, oh, cool. Pressure's on. on. Yeah, pressure's, pressure's on. really on. Everybody uh, else has to be I, negative. I'm Ollie43, <laughs> the enthusiastic one who can swear, but won't. Can swear. Um, I make YouTube videos playing Star Citizen, and um, yeah, we were talking about this before. I don't stream, but maybe I should. Give it a shot. One of these yeah. days. Hmm. Um, Salty Mike. Yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody doesn't know you. You've been on here quite a few times, but uh, for those who do, Salty Mike is the most generally white knight person uh in, in star citizen yes, you can yes. find yeah yeah the, the star I, I citizen the cult most, head yeah i make the most consistent and constant rain on your parade parade content and um <laughs> that's what i'm here for is to just make make you feel bad <laughs> just ruin your day <laughs> yes. put it on the books you are succeeding yep. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome all right and, and and void dude my man uh, let the people um, know where you're from. I'm Void Dude. I run a YouTube channel called Voidy Vids, which is objectively the worst Star Citizen content ever made. Um, and I've recently started uh, streaming on twitch.tv slash Void Dude. Um, yeah, that's me. And you, yeah, the, you, you, uh, Space Tomorrow, you popped my podcast, Cherry. So it's good to be back. Thank you for having me. Always, always happy to be helping out the community in those ways. Uh, sometimes a podcast cherry needs to be popped. Thanks for joining today, man. I uh, appreciate you coming through. Yeah, Void Dude does, does good videos. So we've got like, this is actually a really nice balanced uh, panel. Ollie and Void, you guys both really focus on like gameplay videos. And then Salt and Board, you guys are very much about like informing and sort of distributing news and uh, ruining people's day, I guess, as you said. So, <laughs> so I, I look forward to seeing how your expectations clash. But like you guys have all heard getting in here, we are looking at CitizenCon. It's coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, we've gone through the normal information drought leading up to it. Um, as with every year, they have hyped it up. I feel like this year a little bit more even than normal. And it's a two-day event. And uh, mm. there's like a lot of expectations with Squadron and jump points and like all this stuff. Let's, let's like simmer it all down to the important points and what you guys are realistically thinking might be happening. Before we get into that though, how's the game treating everyone? We just got 320 and then immediately 321 PTU and like things are kind of all over the place. What's, what's going on with you guys in Star Citizen right now? Anybody feel free to start I us off. I have to jump in. Yeah. Like, um, I think it's really cool, the jump point thing. Like, there were, I know there was a lot of debate whether or not it was deliberate. Did it go in the patch and it wasn't meant to be? But as the as the, like we, if you don't know, like a week went on, and like one day we had the pyro jump gate, and it was graphical glitches, and it kind of felt like that was an accident. And then the next day we had another jump point, and then they fixed the graphical, and then we had the last one, Magnus, and then you could actually get to them without having to ask friends to get there and that was really cool i i love that um from as someone who got into star citizen properly fairly recently i loved i think i talked to both you both podcasters here today about my journey of like enjoying yeah. discovering star citizen and then getting to the end of that yeah so it was really cool to be able to do that again but also with the community like it was kind of a first experience and also everyone else is kind of finding these jump points and exploring them. I thought that was cool. So I'm on a with, high right now. With those jump points, I think it's 
almost certain, at least from my point of view, that the initial discovery of them in that first 3.21 patch was an accident because they were glitchy. Mm. They didn't look great. And why would Cloud Imperium give something like that to us without testing it with um, significant Evocardi tests that would have been leaked out be- just before CitizenCon? Why are they gone? Well, have a little bit of a taste that, that we... Uh, Oh, because they, they've been starving us with CitizenCon stuff. And then to suddenly just go, woo, have something. It just, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel legit to me. It feels like it's an accident. Huh. Yeah. That, I, 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 I've seen, I've heard people debate about that. And I have wondered, I mean, it does seem like they clean them up pretty quickly. Uh, they were discovered in the code first, right? It's not like somebody just stumbled upon them. Yeah. They are mind, I assume. Yeah, they were data, they were data mined, and then the the actual locations were data mined, and people found ways to get there. There's debate. There's debates whether how people got to them, um, mm. as well, which is like which is another argument for like it probably wasn't done on purpose. Like, how do you get to Magnus without cheating? Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's with some some people are that's arguing. Impossible. Well, apparently it, it, it is. You can you can quantum jump off of yeah. each other, and it slings you. But it's, wow. there's an argument of how long that could possibly take, and how do you even point in that direction? So how does many... the server not thirty k before you manage it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's like a lot of <laughs> things that are there. I don't I don't necessarily think it's on purpose, but I I do think that it was awesome, and I do think that they knew how awesome it was, so they went and fi- cleaned it up as quickly as possible because it was helping generate excitement. And why wouldn't you? want to uh do these things right yeah. like why wouldn't you want to experience this stuff yeah it do was, you think it, it was meant for a announcement at citizen con by yes. oh we've added the jump points absolutely there's, there's a patch today yeah, yeah. You can comes play, in the 321 play, live patch now absolutely yeah. yep so not that, that we would sad. be jumping through them but i think no. that, that <laughs> it was spoiled yeah for sure well with but, that but, being said then do you think there's anything missing that would they could still have as a surprise of introducing them because the stations are working, the visuals are there. The gate, the gate, yeah. Okay. The gate, yeah. which, which will probably be shown at CitizenCon, right? Like, sure. there almost yeah. will be a mission where they go and look at these locations where the gate is. You can visit those locations now, just not the gate. Yeah. Deliver a box to the gate because an engineer has to go and like fix some stuff. I think Morphologist hit the nail on the head. He made a video about it and said. This reminds me of the World of Warcraft days where you would have a portal going to the next expansion for a period of time before that expansion. And that yep. that was an exciting moment for all these people and all these things. And I don't know, man, I caught a lot of flack around the, the, like making like little jokes about this thing. But I have consistently thought that this was cool. And once Morph said that, I was like, it really hit the nail on the head of why it's so cool. Is it gives yeah. that opportunity for when we are able to jump to pyro the entire server is going to be sitting there waiting to get through the gate and it's going to be awesome it's you know exactly like like if anybody did play classic wow before burning crusade came out that that portal had been in the in in the i can't remember the zone's name but i mean that portal had been there since day naught and yeah. everybody who knew anything about the walk walk of law knew that that was a portal to the outlands or whatever it was called mm-hmm. and yeah I, I get the exact same vibe from this right and that is super super exciting my the the thing that I feel about it is that anybody looking from the outside into Star Citizen at the moment could very easily get the you know misinterpretation that Pyro's here. You know what I mean? And well, I just wonder. <laughs> I, I wonder how much uh, not damage, but like further further upset that could be causing in certain people's like view of the of the project. Right? That's my opinion. I mean, it's definitely like it gets hype going. And I think one of the big mm. questions now would be like, how long is the Magnus and Terra jump points going to be sitting there and not actually used for? Because I mean, it would be, I, I'm sure in three years time, four years time, if Terra still wasn't there, there would be plenty of posts, pictures, jokes about how like, oh, mm. we're still looking at this jump point this many years later and nothing's there. And um, I'd, I'd be interested in knowing why they added all three instead of just the pyro one first if there's any significance well, to that or they just threw maybe, them in there maybe they just want stanton to be as complete as possible yeah like, having all those yeah. locations that makes sense right yeah I'll i think we're reading really too much into it where's our like, air and halo belt gates then give me them. well yeah that would that yeah. would be nice but i think we're reading into it maybe a little too much because 
Mm. Once you go to Pyro, then you get additional jump points. And yep. then it's just the choices of which ones they want to connect to next for mm -hmm. whatever reasons they decide to connect to them, right? Mm -hmm. And then will you complain as much about this Pyro jump point or this uh, Terra or Magnus jump point not working in the Stanton system once you get additional ones? Like, I think the expectation would be Nyx would be next and so on and so forth. But I, I can't remember from the star map, does Nyx connect to Pyro? Does Nyx connect to... So what you look like you know board. Yeah. So yeah, Py Pyro Nix Odin. So I, there you Odin's go. Yeah, it's like a little path. So, yeah. so maybe that's the plan, and I don't think anybody would be too freaked out about that, right? Also, so, very yeah. Warcraft in the you know, you mentioned the first area had a portal all that time, so obviously it would be kind of nostalgic to come back to Stanton by that point to actually yeah, it go. Yeah, finally to, works. Yeah. Mm. Back in my day. So, <laughs> what about? We only um, had a hangar and we were happy. <laughs> <laughs> the only land at this station, and it was called Porosa. Um <laughs> So, do you guys think that there is like this? A lot of people have always called for. Oh yeah, you guys should put like put this in the game and don't tell anybody for exploration purposes and like all this stuff. Now it's actually kind of happened with these jump gates, but people data mined and found them. What's your view on the idea of how they could put things into the game and leave them in organically, but then if data mining finds them, it sort of ruins it. There's a lot of conversation around that. Do you guys have any point of view from that? I'm going to jump straight in. That is a symptom of a problem of modern gaming. There are no secrets anymore. There are no, there is no such thing as exploration in most games anymore because, you know, if, if the, the second you start following a game, the you watch a trailer, you know, so much stuff has already been spoiled. Um, and Star Citizen is one of these things now where every, I don't want to put it negatively, but I can't think of a better word right now. Every, every like kind of like scrap that gets put into patches these days there's no magic behind it right because like we're just consuming the stuff like 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 mad people but um i i think it's up to individual players themselves to just pull back and like let the game get to a point and then jump in and then you'll you could seriously experience like you know a, a lot of great stuff that star Citizen has to offer and i think it, it just comes down to players man but the modern gaming is is very harsh in that regard it's it's there are no secrets anymore is it important that there's any secrets at the yeah. moment though like at the moment it's the game is in development they need to be testing this stuff and i want to be wowed by star citizen and secrets and explore the universe once it's done at the moment mm. i want to help test it but yeah. is it but ever going to be like an on off is it possible yeah, yeah. is it is, is it is it always going to be like this format of content like obviously the game will release at some point but it'll always be there'll always be a ptu is my point i guess right what, Maybe. What at least during the alpha yeah i don't i don't see a, a world where we don't ever like i don't see a point where we the game gets released and then we don't have a ptu anymore yeah because that I would agree. require them to change the way they develop the game which i yeah. don't think they would do yeah they would just continue to have the ptu and have yep. people test it and obviously there's per, there's reasons if you want to get on the ptu you have to be a subscriber or spend a certain amount of money and that obviously is worth something to CIG. So I don't see them removing the PTU. So I, I think it's sad, the whole data mining thing. I love it. I Like, I was checking out the jump points. It was a cool leak or whatever it's called. But it does make it sad that we're never going to be at that point where, unless you, like Boyd said, ignore it, you're going to be able to explore Star Citizen in a way that is 100% organic because that information mm. will be out there. It will be a w on a wiki page or right. whatever. And like, I don't think Bored or I can do like I know Bored is a min maxer and I like to play that way too. Like, how can you possibly avoid if if you know other people are doing things that you can't? Like, that's just that's like one of the FOMO. things that I mm. yeah like I, I play games to me. Yeah, just exist I, in my I, head. I, I'm complete opposite. I hate spoilers. Please don't. Yeah. Spoil I anything. hate. I hate the, the them, thing is, but I hate when other people are are using like a data mine situation to get ahead of you or something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's, the thing that's is, there might I be look at it. there might be sort of content types, and you know, like forget what it's called now. Probably it's not Rastar. Um, you know, like like in Skyrim, you've got some kind of, or maybe it's um, I can't remember what the the, the technical term that they used for the actual mechanism by which they spawn interesting things near you, right? So it's like you know you're you're just busy playing Skyrim, and then there's a certain amount of, and this is very, uh, what's his name, the the guy with the, the board, 
the, the, the guy who disappeared in, in Star Citizen Developer. What's oh, probability name? volumes and Tony Z. Yeah. Oh, Tony, Tony Z. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the probability <laughs> volume type stuff. I mean, that 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 type of um, gameplay exists in a game like Skyrim, where it's like you've got a, a, a random chance for something to occur as you're busy adventuring, right? And they, they I mean, they've like fine-tuned this stuff down to a T where they know like every 40 seconds to a minute or every three minutes something has to happen in Skyrim a dragon must spawn or this must happen or whatever that same concept that's what I understand from when Tony Z gets you know, going on about um, uh, the quantum and all that kind of stuff it's like you'll sit down you'll play Star Citizen and then some kind of event something will trigger as you go and make your way through the universe this is like the final vision right something will trigger and that kind of stuff could never truly be spoiled or data mined or, or ruined for you because that's your personal own like that. adventure that you're going to have I, I'm, I'm hoping that that's the primary content of star citizen at the end of the day right because like you can only do siege of orison so many times before it's like okay I've done enough if, siege of orison kind of thing if those sort of sort of roller coaster missions those theme park missions have enough modularity to them and enough um, sort of um, dynamic content to them, then it is going to be a lot harder for them to be as spoiled, right? Mm. Well, it's still going to it's going to be a description or line of how to optimize them, and if you want to participate with that, you can. Um, but I also think there's going to be content which is very very dynamic that that you can't possibly data mine in the right way. People will know like there's wormhole spawning that might take you to different locations, but they don't know where and when they're going to spawn and things like that. Mm. Exactly, and that's. That's part of what they've been built. I mean, it feels like they've focused a lot on building that. Even Elliot in chat right now with the missions team, they've been showing us kind of the variability in the missions that they're doing. And I agree with you, Void Dude. I mean, as far as a mission in space goes, if you look at like any sort of space movie, like those, those quests are always just fetch quests. Like the, the whole Han Solo movie is literally, hey, grab this thing and fly it back to another place. And like random stuff pops up you know you get a pirate here you get like a weird gas cloud that you can't get in have to go around mm -hmm. here you do that in star citizen what, and it's what entertainment yeah yeah what, what we're technically talking about here is emergent gameplay essentially right and i've sure. become a bit of a buzzword people maybe don't like hearing it i guess but if my the reason why i'm so passionate about star citizen as a project is i, I honestly still believe that they are putting enough of the foundational pieces in place so that meaningful emergent gameplay can take place for you during any session, right? Not annoyingly, so I think it's going to be an incredibly fine balance between like making it annoying and making it like functional, interesting, meaningful content, right? Like I think Salty, I've seen on your streams many times chatting about um, the engineering type gameplay. At what point does that get correctly implemented and it is fun and feels good when something goes wrong with your engines and now you've got to like change your course completely make a detour make a stop fix get fuel whatever the mechanism is i think i i, I personally feel that they're putting enough foundation in place over the long term um to make that kind of stuff interesting right to to, to, to hopefully you know I, the balancing act is going to be tremendous but that's kind of my hope for star Citizen and and and, and that possibility for emergent gameplay is what's going to make it special I have to jump in and sorry and no, say I completely uh, disagree. Void that, like I, if the system is like if you're doing X, we're going to throw random stuff at you all the time. Then, or if you go to planet Y that no one else has been on, what's the point of me doing anything decisively? Because regardless of where I go and regardless of what I do, I'm going to get thrown the same content. For me. The multiplayer aspect, it works for Starfield because you're on your own. But I think the element of Star Citizen is the people make add the randomness, right? And, and I still have control. If I go to Planet X and there's nothing there and there's nothing to do, okay, today I didn't find anything and it makes the highs even better. But if I went to Planet X and it spawns in activities and things all the time, it makes me go, well, I might as well just not think about where i'm going or make a decision because it's going to do it anyway it doesn't mm. matter like you can start to see where the cogs are turning whereas if it's if it, everything's placed then you know yeah you it becomes decisions. very transparent if your pool of emergent gameplay opportunities is very finite right so it's mm. like every time you log in one of five things is going to happen and you get bored of that very quickly that's kind of what I'm hoping it's not going to be like, right? But I, I do think that that's going to be part of the magic source that this game would eventually be. But, you know, who knows if that's even still the vision in the absolute long term? I don't know. That's... I, do like that as a, I do like that as a point, though, Ollie. 
like dynamic versus sort of decisive immersive mm, content intentional yeah there's like, i yeah, think they're oh, go ahead tomato well there's there's definitely got to be a balance i mean you can't just like yeah. you can't be flying and every time you leave the space station they're like a pirate has come across you like there's got to be mm. that's that whole quantum probability volumes like oh if you go here this might happen more and there's going to be so this has to be so much fine tuning with this sort of system because like you guys are saying there's two different approaches both of them feel right but they have to kind of provide enough content in either direction yeah i just think that the like void you started with emergent gameplay but i think everybody defines it maybe a little bit differently is I think you get what Ollie wants with that's emergent gameplay, but also, I mean, if we look back at like all the Tony Z talks from, from way back, he was always talking about probability volumes based off of all the little quantum AI flying around and doing their thing. And that there's a chance that you would see those things. And when you did see them, they would be informed by what that little quantum AI might've been doing. So what they would be wearing, what they would be using and what, thing you would experience would be defined there but i also don't think what ali is worried about space is huge so the idea of constantly being barraged with these things in similar ways that we are on starfield i don't expect that to be much of an issue i think you're going to be able to make the decisions that you want to make but then also have a couple of choices occasionally come across you so the world doesn't feel as boring as it currently does now at times um to to have the choice to go well there's a you know princess peach is over here i'm gonna go save her or whatever or nice crossover you know yeah <laughs> or or something else like that i think that there there'll be an opportunity for for both and uh you know if you look again at at jump town security post korea and some of these other situations you're going to be guaranteed to experience other players whereas salvage missions maybe not right or mining maybe not but you know so there's hopefully again a really good balance but it's it's one of the things i'm the least concerned about is I suppose what you want is with that, that is you, you want it to be like the spice and the seasoning added to that direct yeah. content. You want to go, this yeah. dynamic exactly. content is happening, but I don't want it to be the main focus. And I don't want to just go, oh, I can just play, I can go forward in a straight direction yeah. and the game will just make content for me. I don't need to think. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't want right. that at all. And I think that's what Ali's saying is that yeah. that would be dangerous, right? But if Ali, let's say, wanted to to um, run some cargo to Brio's breaker yard, he should be able to. But the, the opportunity for maybe... Uh, a giant like this would be like the mega rarest opportunity but a giant idris to just pop in and start raining down fire on you and like you and your org fight them off like i yeah. think we would all want that opportunity to happen sometimes like yeah. i think it, yeah i think crap, i think it's just right? percentages right you exactly it scaled back to like one or two on the dial exactly yeah. but i mean exactly. if it happens it's cool but you don't want it yes. every time you get in your ship and yeah you don't want fully, it, fully like, behind what, what it's like a pacing thing right it's like if, yeah. if the pacing is healthy and it doesn't become too transparent i think you know that, that yeah. that's going to be a winner right to completely agree with ollie on that point for yeah. sure it's, uh, uh probabilities if you will yeah mm -hmm. Probability volumes. That, that well, That's going to be the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking forward to, I think, uh, this is actually a great segue into our main topic for the day. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some more of Quantum at CitizenCon, but not in necessarily as just like a panel that gets talked about, but like something more akin to maybe how we saw like FPS scanning last year, an actual application. I don't know how they would show that, but getting into kind of CitizenCon expectations and stuff, Let's start with quantum and the economy and updates like that. Tony Z, however you want to approach it. Do you guys think we're going to see anything on that this year? That well, was on Twitter, wasn't it? Who wants to see some more Tony Z? No, Did they no, say no, that, no, the that, official account? No, no, you got duped a little. You just had a boomer moment. Look at the date. <laughs> what? It was from 2020. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... The, it was but a retweet Citizen, from a random person. That said, typically, Star Citizen is about three years behind. <laughs> Right on schedule. I think for this year. Oh my Good god, did point. I get boomered? Oh, you no. got boomered, dude. You had a boomer news, moment. Yeah, it, it was a it was a fan that retweeted a three year old tweet. Gosh, wow. they get you. Yeah. So I have a question. So did Tony Z do anything last year? I can't remember. No. Nothing. He did nothing no. for the company. He got, right. he got talked so about. So I had a holiday. I have to blow all your minds and say I don't think I've sat through a Tony Z thing as it happened. I've watched them in the past. Oh, so, they're great. I'm so watch. excited for you. Yeah. 
Oh, no, I'm actually, sorry. Is it confirmed? That, that Tony implies will be that there you're going to see him. No, no, no. I okay. Part of that was sarcasm because the, they can get long. Uh, I would say the systemic, the system of thought one was probably the longest, but they're they're good talks. Like quantum as a system is a beautiful idea. It looks really cool. It seems like it'll be the backbone for an amazing game. But Bobby, I'm pretty sure you've heard the jokes. Like we've heard a lot about it, and generally, it doesn't come in in any obvious way. Um, mm. and it, 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 not only does it not come in, in an obvious way, it's like, we don't really get that many regular updates about it. It doesn't show up on like sprint reports. It hasn't really gotten talked about on the monthly report until they just started the economic team. So it's like, yeah, a, they've a, got the, a the economy team now though. So. Yeah. Yeah. What, so, what's the development team that's taken over or like, is that that's helping with it or whatever? Remember the name of that team? I can't remember. It, it there's a, there's an, a, a outside company that was helping along with it or something and they put it in a month report like a oh. year moon collider ago. was eight, there was there was moon collider not and moon collider was, what was the other one i can't remember called? but there's some but there's some team that's helping out Il with no it. not ilphonic ilphonic was no. star marine so when Oof. was the last time we heard from tony two years ago and I nothing think. in like reports or monthly Z literally mm -hmm. no. radio no. silence yeah. and it's he, a meme and it's that, not we, that he's asleep. He's just he's in cryo sleep, and they're waiting for it's a little nap. I, have yeah. they said he's going to be there this year? No, no. Will well, you guys be surprised well. if he's not there this year? Game Horizon. That's I, the one, guys. Okay. Thank I wouldn't you. be surprised yeah. if he's not there. I don't need Tony to be there to hear about the economy. Um, mm. but I think I would be surprised if there wasn't any talk about it. You know, look at look at like this the gameplay that they're bringing in. They're talking about, um actual cargo hauling with the whole sea they're bringing in space stations to kind of shore up their trade routes like i feel like we can't go another year without the economy no, making moves we can't dude there's no we, way we've <laughs> said that about so many things before it's true like, no but this for many is, years but, no, like, you mean that but we're but we're at <laughs> <Come> like we <laughs> you can only say it so many years <laughs> <laughs> the economy hurts, man. Like cargo hauling is a thing now. The cargo you refactor is a thing. Hulsey is yeah. in the game. They gotta do something. You gotta re you gotta recognize that this is the first year that the 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 status of the game has actually affected the funding negatively. So this is the first year like you can actually say something like, guys, we gotta do stuff. We gotta do something. Because it's not just a, a money printing machine anymore by just drawing pretty pictures. You got to do, they got to do something now. And I think that's one of the things that they have to do is that they might be feeling the pressure a little bit and, and got to do that stuff. And I, I just want to see, I don't care if I see Tony Z or not. I want to see the Game Horizon devs there sharing their work with us. That's what I want to see. Um, if, if anything around Quanta, that's what I would like to see. Um, because okay. whether it's a Tony Z talk running his mouth about all the th possibilities, I don't care. I want to see the actual work, you know, and see it functioning. Which they did show us the one time, right? They showed with the pirate dude, players. Yeah. Well, no, they they showed quant uh, quantum with uh, players, like actual players. Like it wasn't fake. Like I knew the player names, some of them, uh, on the original time where we saw the little dots going around. So like oh, yeah? it has it had some functionality, unless they just put random usernames in there and i just happen to recognize them i i always wondered if say. that was if that was real or not like when they were like oh yeah these are real players was. playing the game right now that, that'd be i cool. believe it was yeah yeah so i mean we can always be like oh yeah they can only say this so many years but i do think that over these last couple of years with the lead up to uh server meshing and then specifically with that sort of huge period before pes um I think they've set the expectations now differently. Like they've always done it based on their own messaging, but now it's also kind of like the way the game is actually developing from 3.21 coming in so quickly with replication layer to PES actually getting in the game and like messing things up. It feels like now they need to meet, they need to meet that calling with their actual development or else yeah. um, the sentiment's going to be worse than it was this summer. And this summer it was not great. I, yeah. I think, I think they're still on, this year to make a record breaking amount of money with Citizen Con and the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. I think, I think that's they're fair. six and a half million down from what they were previously for, for year on year. Money's so, good. Oh, for real, that's it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, it's about okay. six and a half million. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, take, it, I'll take everything I, I, I just said back. I thought it was much further. I don't follow it as much, but I, I thought it was much further off than that because like people were showing large percentages off. I me. think for certain months, yes. But ah, before, so okay, the, okay. The yeah. two, two or three months, they've been relatively bad compared to their previous ones. But yeah. overall for the year, they're only about six and a half million or seven million. I feel yeah. like More the Star Citizen though, but, yeah. community are desperate to love Star Citizen when it's not working or yeah. when it when they, when it's not delivering is what i mean it's true 100%. so i feel like as soon as citizen con if they only need like one or two things to absolutely hit and i think people will it will reinvigorate a lot of people instantly because they want to love this game they've already invested in so i think i think to your point that you know people are kind of losing you know, they're kind of tired and waiting and they need the delivery. I feel like they only need a little nudge because they're waiting to be nudged, you know? So, so I th I think they'll be fine by the end of the year, personally. Like, what do you think? Year on year. We have, like, several different kind of, like, big things that they've been working on, like bounty hunting, engineering, the star map. Like, there's, there's some pretty significant stuff. What do you think is going to be that big nudge? Like, the actual highlight for most people just a, a big ship i think because it i i, I, I know <laughs> oh my god so the disgust <laughs> just, just, who just made that sound was that tomato yeah. somebody just got disgusted i feel like that's all reaction. they need to do just uh, just <laughs> deliver a big ship i think that's literally all they need to do i i like actually finish it ollie like deliver it in, in the game yeah okay make, okay. make a track and flyable yeah mm. yeah yeah or yeah. they've got um is it Perseus? Perseus? Is that it? Uh, I mean, Polaris. Okay, yeah. Polaris. What is they? So they're working on that. So all they need to do, I know it's not coming for Citizen Con, I don't think. But if they just said, this is coming out in two weeks, you can well, pre-order so it for a discount. How would you feel if they had the Idris and the Javelin flyable by players at that point? Or one of them? I mean, that would be, cool. be big. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be even better, but I don't even think they need to deliver that to get the reaction that I'm talking about. I, I still think that what they can do, which is relatively low-hanging fruit, is persistent hangers. or, or Not even mm. not even true persistent hangers, just the instantized hangers, the, the steps towards persistent hangers. People going, look, I've got a hanger that I can customize to some degree yeah, and that no, I can invite my good. friends to um, and that I can use as a, a, ba a base of operation, which has these, these freight elevators. Cool. We know they're working on it. It's probably almost done. I think Star Citizen is, is such a, hey, look at my cool X, right? So big ship or persist. Like if you, if I had friends that I could bring into Star <laughs> Citizen, I would say, like, friend, <laughs> I would say, Guys, look Craig's at this hanger man. that is mine. I've got a little, there's my cargo corner. There's some of my uh, flyable little one-seater ships. There's there's a Connie sat in the corner, whatever it is. I don't know. But like, I think that will bring a lot of people back because they'll be like, oh, cool, I've got my own hanger. I think that would be massive, actually. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, hangers or a big ship that you can go, look, I bought a big ship. I can't fly it on my own, but it's great. <laughs> in my opinion, the... All of the stuff surrounding the persistent hangers, freight elevators, like manual cargo loading seems kind of like a shoe in at CitizenCon because that's something that they've been working on all year. Like we can tell it's kind of like probably the patch after 321. I'm guessing we would see something like freight elevators because I was why hoping you, 321. Why do you but... call it? Why do you call I it the patch after 321, Tomato? Why, why do you call know, it that? I don't know what the heck's going on, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't call it 4.0. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's it's so funny. The, <laughs> you're like, yeah, uh, the 3.21.3, whatever it's called. Naming conventions and key bindings. CIG, work on it, please. Like, oh, or don't work on it. Don't work on key bindings. Leave them alone. Or we'll combine them both. <laughs> Start changing the names of my keys. Instead of the C key, I want this to be called like the quantum I'm key. Start picking up keys. In order to turn on your ship, you have to press three dot twenty one. You have to press the patch number that you're in. Oh, oh. That would yeah. actually be kind of cool if you could put I, a password a into your ship. Yeah, that would actually be sick. I that, think. That, that's yeah. actually Beep a feature. Beep Beep yeah. Oh god. All right, <laughs> that program is it in. Cool. Another couple there of years. There you go. But yeah, I think but, um, 
the the persistent hangers and like freight elevators is something that we're gonna see you guys do you think how far into like cargo style gameplay because they've been talking about how they're doing it in steps what do you think is like the furthest out sort of thing they've talked about that we might see going on at citizen con well seeing it citizen con and seeing it in our hands are two different things so you're just, just yes just, just at citizen, citizen con. con yeah the furthest out thing that we see, oh, geez, I don't think it's cargo because they didn't show you. You can debate whether or not it cargo would be shown at Citizen Con if they didn't show anything like everything pre Citizen Con video wise was all like this super far out stuff. Uh, I think engineering is the furthest out thing that we'll see at Citizen Con because it's actively being worked on, but it's so much work that it's going to take forever. Didn't they say when they, they were showing it, they were like, yeah, it's coming probably sooner than you guys think. And I'm and I'm like, you guys don't know what I think. Tomato. Don't say that. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here with like, you guys have seen my video right at the beginning of the year. So yeah. you might get engineering on a tested on a single ship or two ships earlier. Yeah. On in the experiment. Hammerhead. Like, of course. Hammerhead, but also almost certainly the Gladius. Because yeah. the Gladius in engineering, it's very easy. It's tall. a fighter. You know what's interesting is one of the other, it was a monthly report last year, they mentioned three of the ships they were kind of doing their first pass of engineering on, and one of them was the hull Ares. A. Yeah, hull the hull A, A. was in there, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I was thinking the hull A, maybe because it was a small ship with an interior they were working on, but the Ares was an interesting choice as like, I'm guessing they're sort of, this is what engineering looks like on a just cockpit ship, and I wondered why that wasn't the Gladius instead. Because they wanted to make it's... everyone angry after nerfing it. <laughs> it's good. It's a now, nice though. ship that people. Yeah. Pro they probably have high sales of that ship. And it's it's, it's publicity. Is good publicity. No, I wouldn't say it's it good, good now. On it's appropriate screen. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That was a that was a thorn in a lot of people's side. Yeah. So engineering is a good one, I think. Um, if I had to say what what should they focus their whole keynote around if they wanted to do like a multiplayer sort of demo i would say just put people on a big ship and send them on a trade route from stanton to pyro and do engineering stuff I, i'd focus Man. mainly on the engineering and get attacked would, or something yeah. i would love to see somebody rock up at pyro do some stealth mission gameplay type thing then maybe a sandworm yeah. comes out of nowhere that oh, would be man. insane no. sneaking oh, through events all the classics <laughs> sneaking all the through classics event, and one. cutting the thing yeah and then, and then there were people in my discord talking about how they should totally like do the sandworm like pot do and do like a crack in underwater and like have all these underwater and <laughs> just go like absolutely balls to the wall with it. That would be cool. You know what? You know what would I be great? See the it would be cool, Classic it would be so dude fans. What if they, they started out their like their keynote video with like a little bit of a cinematic intro and you have like the sandworm bursting out of the sand and doing all the stuff and acting crazy and then the camera instead of doing anything nuts no, just kind of zooms out and you see that the sandworm is like just like this this three inch long little boy that they created and it's sitting on Daymar and it's not actually a sandworm. I mean, you might, one day they might say we bought the Unknown World studio who made Subnautica and go, well, now we've got loads of underwater gameplay as well. Oh my God. Like, that's the Yo, sort of, you never know what they're going to do. The, yeah, one the biggest thing... news at Citizen Con, we bought another studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess that well, would be... It works for Microsoft, so... I'd yeah, be like, true. hey, I, I, things seem to be good. Everybody else is doing layoffs and you guys are buying studios. I guess things are going yeah. well yeah um though the one thing that i would the one thing on the roadmap that always makes me laugh is bo boat parameters which is like something for squadron but just the fact that boat parameters is on the roadmap for a space sim always well, makes me gonna, laugh you're probably going to see civilian boats at some of the outposts and things yeah. like that the, right? yeah. even if they're little tugboats or whatever okay. and they do want some ships to be able to you know float they, they want water physics to be part of that 890, 890 jump doesn't sit in a lake <laughs> it yeah, looks like true. a boat yeah. unplayable yeah. or or make a boat version of it or whatever the i mean i think what what this game has succeeded with incredibly well so far is there may not be any sand in the sandbox but the sandbox tools that they've created to allow players to try to have some fun are pretty pretty wild right like tractor beaming physicalized cargo a lot of a lot of the things that we've been seeing lately there's a lot of cool tools to to play with um and i 
I can't imagine, you know, floating ships or boats or anything like that wouldn't go along those lines of those tools. Yeah, it'd be uh, nice but, to have some more yeah. sand though, wouldn't it, in that sandbox rather than just the the sandcastle like mold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have all the molds. We just need either the sand or the water to make it molding. E- yeah. You know, to do the molding easier or whatever. You know, whatever thing you want to say. There's something missing right now, but it's just a, a matter of focusing on those things and I, I just don't think we focus on it until after meshing or whatever but that's yeah. what well, we, that's, the big old meshing. that's why people want it so bad you yep. know that's why we want meshing is to the, for the focus to change yeah chris did say we were me. at an Shouldn't inflection point so what what do people think chris's inflection point with squadron 42 is I don't know what the inflection point is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm American. Like, what does inflection point mean? To... <laughs> it, it just, that's a, a, that's a curse, engine. actually, oh, yeah. in Britain. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> so, inflection point, basically, you know how you have curves that go up and down, yeah? So, yeah. yeah. So the inflection point is where it starts to go up. So the inflection point for Squadron 42 um, stuff coming to Stasis, in which Chris oh, said... Oh, to the PU. Yeah. The you mean? He said there was okay. an inflection point. Yeah, so as an... As an resources coming from squadron 42's development back to the pu because i mean I, I, the way i perceive this project sometimes is that there's like this graveyard graveyard shift of people working on the pu right and which these guys are just desperately trying to get stuff pushed and like features come through you know patch by patch every four months or whatever and and th- th- that as you said the inflection point or like for me the this this mainstream influx of like development that can then actually be worthwhile and, and like every patch pu wise becomes insanely exciting because there's actual resources now dedicated to the pu that is like magnitudes more than what is currently there yeah. that's I, my hope as well i so, i mean i mean like sorry carry on. no 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 carry on sorry i was gonna say i took it as like we're just at a major turning point mm. um yeah. yeah or like well, we've hit and a uh, hit the f- i it comes across like we've hit the final chapter or we've hit a chapter which is towards the end of squadron 42 or like we've hit a point where now we've got the last leg it's kind of how i interpreted it maybe it's wishful thinking but um i thought that since 2016 though ollie yeah <laughs> so, I know, but I you, just, you haven't so. thought it they've literally <laughs> said it before so that's the hard part about this yeah. it's like they they have and and i just I'm just at a point where I don't believe anything they say until what they say actually starts to come true often. Um, so they they have a chance to to do that this year, right? Is in the next year or so. Like they have until the end of the year to deliver the new star map, the the new um, EVA mechanics and things that they showed at CitizenCon last year that they said would be in by the end of the year this year, right? Yep. So, you know, when when can I start believing you on what you say is that's 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 the biggest thing um and those are the features that i really do expect to see at citizen con because we could go back to the letter from the chairman in december uh we can go back to citizen con from last year we could go back even further to the talk with richard tyre about two years ago now they've been communicating regularly hey we're working on this stuff for squadron it's going to be better it's going to get into the pu and the only thing i think we've seen so far is the mantling we just got in 320. There might be yeah. something else, but like it's been super minimal. It's hopes, intentions, and targets at the moment until it's in your hands, like like Mike was saying. That um, mantling saved me in prison the other day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's great. <laughs> that's so much better. Really, there you go. That's really great. That's yeah. really great that the, you know that was the first piece that came in, and it's like you know the the simplest one or whatever. Mm, However, yeah. you can you know take a negative point of view on that if you want but it's not you know it's a good thing and it, it just comes down to them doing that but like tomato you said you wanted to see it at citizen con like what do you mean like you want to well, see the same demo of it again no like, so i want it i want them to say it's in like it's in 321 you guys are all at citizen con i'm sitting here at home and they go these all these new things are here in the in the patch you guys can maybe play it on a computer there or whatever but that's what yeah. i'm hoping for so what i would hope to see um, I'd bring it back to uh, CitizenCon 21, I think, 2021. And before mm-hmm. I get super deep into this, I just I do want to say again, for anybody who is listening to this live, YouTube, Twitch, uh, a link has been dropped in the chat. Folks, supporters during these podcasts get to join us afterward for a private Q&A with all these guests, um, hear what they have to say about certain things. So if you guys who are watching live want to put in questions, please hit that link and put them in. I'll be posting that as well as this podcast on YouTube. Um, so... I'm just putting that out there because I see it in chat, people asking questions. But the what I would want to see at CitizenCon regarding those those uh, features is 
they showed us FPS scanning, interaction mode, engineering gameplay. Um, uh, what else did EVA. they show us? Yeah, EVA stuff, the platforming, all of those things, those little features. I want to see them in a gameplay scenario like in 21 when they were going and doing that mission and then they would like grab stuff and put it in their backpack or they would kill someone and loot their body. And we could tell you're, that's the game because we got those additions yeah. like two weeks after that demo. I want to yeah. see it in a gameplay environment where we know these are the features that you showed us in a closed environment last year. Now you've worked on them to the point where they're ready to go into an actual like server. And I don't yep. know how they show us that with the confidence that we know we would get it, but there's a lot of features that fall into that category now because we yeah. didn't get a lot of that stuff over this last year. The only way to do that is to to uh, regain that confidence by getting it done, right? Yeah. That's it. So looking back at those features, um, there are a few. I actually have a, a list here. I could probably post these to you guys. Just a bunch of features really that were kind of maybes or yeses. Uh, I'm going to go through a few of those features that we had seen last year, and I want you guys to tell me which one you would be most interested in seeing shown in depth at CitizenCon. So there's FPS radar and scanning. There's the EVA T2 stuff. There are AI combat improvements. Um, there is, they didn't show this, but I do think this would be the year to show it, the star map, which I will kind of group in with like the interior maps and stuff. Um, and just as a little extra, control surfaces and like the aerodynamics. Of those features, what do you guys think is going to be a focus for them? Ma well, I want to see maps, right? Mm. Does anyone not want to see maps out of that list? I would, yeah, that's pretty high on my list. Uh, they will do the community. They they will get a lot of excitement if they show the new star map because I think that's a pain point for a lot of people that play regularly. Unless it's terrible. What if their star map it is worse? Can oh it be God. worse? <laughs> After all no, this time. <laughs> can oh it be my worse? God. What time I know you? 321 and double click and just auto crash this, this week, you know, <laughs> on the star map. That was fun. Really? So... Yeah, oh, if you double was... clicked a party member, you instantly. You know crashed. what the worst part about that is? I I was heading to Magnus. I was about a million <laughs> kilometers away, and then I double clicked the star map to get zoomed in, and I praise, dude. <laughs> that is such a crazy. It's question. fixed. <laughs> yeah. It's fixed. By the way, never happened to me. So was that was <laughs> that in live or was that you just need, a PTU? You need friends. PTU. PTU. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you need friends to click on. <laughs> I personally want to see the FPS radar and scanning stuff because I think that, that was yeah, that was the most um Star Citizen thing that they could show, right? What what does Star Citizen do well? Tactile immersion yeah. stuff. And the current hold F and all this, you know, really, really kind of tier zero, bad, not fun interactions that we currently have now. That was a really polished, more, a better version of of uh, of what I have been playing for, for many years, right? So I'm, I'm hyper excited to be able to kind of pinpoint, grab a pen or grab little things, right? Yes. Everybody who's, that's played Starfield here, I think one of the more fun things was taking things from one location, putting it on your ship and being able to place it down and stuff like that. And uh, I think it makes whatever, you know, boards bringing up persistent hangers and like, you know, little things like that, making the game more um, our own would be, would be you really know, great. The, the little thing they showed on Inside Star Citizen this week with the whole place a box or like hover a box and it will like try to put it in the easiest spot for you. Huge yeah. kind of like quality of life fix. I'd love to see something like that for awesome. interaction like you're talking about. I like think, make that I think interaction. That's in now, by the way. Yeah. Lag aside, I, I don't the, the PTU. I, I, I'm blown away by how well tractoring boxes just works in the game. Like yeah. considering what Star Citizen is and how it is and how it behaves and <laughs> yeah. how service stuff works. The, the way that you interact and track the stuff and the physics, I, it, it still blows my mind every time we're tracking lots of boxes around that I'm just not kind scared. of operates the way it does. I'm not scared that I'm going to explode anymore when I'm moving boxes. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that is a big thing. That is genuinely a big thing. You, you're totally right. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah, it's, it's, it does work. It's a system that works. Now. Whoever made the tractor beam at CIG should be promoted to Chris Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the because it's, maybe, it's, it's maybe it was basically <laughs> perfect since it's been made. Yeah. Best feature I think they've brought into the game, like consistently performs. It changed the game. It changed Xenothreat when it came in. Like, I, I do like the tractor beam in this game. Yeah. If there's one beam, 
It's the track people. I just wish exactly. you could place the grid anywhere. Like, what do you mean? Isn't, isn't that the plan? So, so say if I was on Daymar and I had a C2 and I wanted to rearrange a load of boxes for whatever reason, I wish I could just, I don't know, place a box and then I, w I wish the game would then allow me to stack the boxes. I see. Even outside of the ship. Uh, yeah, you like build you. a custom Understood. grid anywhere you want. Yeah, yeah. That would actually be cool if you placed a box and it kind of lined it up based on that box. Yeah, yeah that's... Solid quality of life. Ollie, you should you should go work at CIG. I like mm -hmm. that one. Maybe, maybe if you try. put that quality of life thing, if you post that online, Chris Roberts will respond to you. Oh, you have to be Toronto though. Your little yeah. Your little uh. <laughs> your your streamer sorry. entitlement. I've only been I've only covering the game for like ten years. It's fine. It's Chris doesn't respond to me. It's <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't even mind. I don't even care. <laughs> Just respond. Together. Oh, this is cool. This is, that's cool, Chris. Thanks. Thanks for answering all my questions. Great. <laughs> um oh actually that's something a little a little break from uh the citizen con discussion because i do want to get your guys thoughts on his messaging there specifically with kind of what has been revealed as now the problem that has uh plagued pes since it came in and uh, apparently what's caused issues with 318 and now 320 launching has been their sort of database and it is an enterprise third-party solution that he says in his response you're talking about is giving them some trouble and possibly making it difficult for PES to work. What do you guys take away from that? Is that worrying to you, or do you think that they've got it under control? Why do you think it took so long to be mentioned? I mean, well, they could fix just, it quickly, and they couldn't. It, it's just uh, one of the reasons that there are so many bugs, right? And they've gone, well, if we solve this, if we just solve the database stuff of the bugs, then the database stuff will work. So it's, it, it, was, uh, it didn't really mean anything. That's what I'm try trying to say with it. It was, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, yes, if they solve it, great, and stuff will work better. We're working to make stuff work better, is what Chris said. And I went, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I agree that it maybe didn't ultimately mean anything, but I actually really did appreciate hearing that this particular thing was an issue, right? It, it, it felt yep. like I got a bunch of clarity. It was like, we've gone for this enterprise level solution. Theoretically, we all looked at this thing and we thought it was going to work. In reality, however, after all this implementation and, and you know doing do, you know literally doing something that nobody else has done with this enterprise type solution where theoretically it should work, there's problems. There is no other you know you can't Google this and be like, hey, this doesn't work, right? Because nobody else is doing this on Earth. So I appreciated that level of clarity and be like, oh, okay, well that you know if you're going to give me a, a reason, that sounded like a pretty good reason, right? I don't I don't share this point of view. I just see it and it I mean it kind of would make sense to me. I, I think it was first off, my point of view is I think it's nice to to hear from him and hear what's going on. Okay. That's always good. Uh whether so Tarada needs to post on Spectrum more because it's been a year and a half since the last time. Chris Roberts from the, from the guy. Community. Yeah, exactly. He's he's our our connection between. But the the one thing that I, I see a lot of people saying, and it's kind of like, OK, it, it's really easy to just pass the buck then. Right. Because now instead mm -hmm. of going, it's our fault, we screwed up. No, it's their fault. And a lot of what people are saying is, is, is how you. Yeah, of course. How you use the, the like if this is a, a billion dollar million dollar company, you know, a database company that doesn't have these kind of issues with other people. It's really what Void, Void Dude's saying and going, we're doing things that nobody's we're using the database in a way no one's ever used it before. And that's why we're dealing with these issues. And he didn't really say that. He just said these are really good, strong enterprise things and we shouldn't have mm. these issues. But we did. Do and it's like, well, whose fault is it really? <laughs> you know, and it's do, like do you think in a way he he. he he responded to Toronto to put like a threat out there. Like nobody will let him say anything publicly no. at, at CIG, but he was actually trying to threaten the enterprise people by saying that's not fucking working, you know? No, I think he's <laughs> just trying to be like, I think Chris is a human being. Everybody who works there is a human being. And when you hear everybody talking, sh yeah, I, we're not allowed to curse. And, and when you hear everybody Sorry. saying <laughs> bad things about about your employees and the implementation of the really hard work that they put in. And he uh -huh. and because this is why I don't feel that way, because I actually believe Chris, because I think Chris is standing in front of all the bullets and taking them for the people who worked really hard. And the fact that everyone's saying bad things about these people that worked really hard when it's not their fault necessarily. Uh it it's kind of tough to stand there and not say anything. I don't think it has anything to do with threatening the company because to be honest, there's legal 
contracts and all these. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way. Like, he, he could maybe it's, even be sued. What what he for what he said. Friends, the, the the wrong word, but it's it's yeah. kind of like you know somebody going on to Yelp and complaining about it. But like, sure, you know, sure. a, a completely back anyway. Kind I, of I, I, think I, I believe he's to... defending his employees there. I don't yeah. think it was much of a complaint either, really. I mean, he, he was just saying, look, we, we know what the sort of problem is and it, we can go, we need a different database solution because that's the weak link here at the moment and we've tried to make it work. Like, mm, and it, that's it, not it the case, man. But I, that's, that's what it sounds like it is, right? That's what, from what? what he said. I, I do believe that's what uh, what is the problem. But I'm, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really mean anything beyond the, we're just trying to make something work for this. And, and they'll mm. come up with a solution. They don't 100% know what that's going to be yet. Maybe yeah. they'll just get this enterprise software working or better because they will eventually even if they don't change it to another product they'll iterate on it enough that it work the way they want yeah. it to well, so how much time is that i think that's take? i think that might be the only path forward man but what do we know do you I guys think chris just got caught into a like a situation where <laughs> criticism was given to him by someone fairly high profile and mm-hmm. i feel like chris is like if it was me if i was chris i was sat there and all i wanted to say essentially was like look we know we're working on that stuff it's all very good what you're saying we're not ignoring you i think that's probably what came across in that post from my perspective if chris wanted to put across that we know we we agree with you and we are working on that and also it's really annoying we spend we're spending a lot of time and effort on this database thing and at the moment we haven't cracked it but we are trying to fix it yeah. and that is the problem i think it probably came as like a bit of a, a valve moment in terms of like i just need to let people know i am listening and i am reading and i am interacting internally i think it must be really hard I don't, you know i don't want to come across as a chris sympathizer or anything like that but it must be really hard being chris <laughs> When, as Mike said, he is the one taking the bullets when stuff doesn't work, right? He is the face of the company. So it must be tricky to sit back and not say anything on this stuff, I, I, I think. Uh, do you guys uh, think that it could uh, delay their work with the replication layer service or anything like that? Or are you not really considering that? How can you delay what yet is to be released? Yeah. Like, well, never have it yeah, I mean, like, delay it past. So they, they seem to want to get 3.1.x with replication layer this year. Right by the end of the year, in some way. Um, I mean, I don't think it will del- delay it. I mean, they'll they'll just release it, trying to optimize their current solution. Right, like they're not at the end of the tether with it. They're just saying they say potential that they could change it. Yeah, and I, I don't think I don't think they're going to see okay, delays aren't really a thing from CIG anymore because they don't talk about when stuff's going to be released properly anymore. They, they obscure all the dates and everything and do some voodoo magic, um, and it's really hard to tell when it's coming out. And that sort of annoys me because I wish they were more open to failure and expressing actually what's happening and what their targets are. I don't know. What is your plan for the end of the year? Why aren't you telling me? Well, it's because you don't want to disappoint you. You're disappointing me by not telling me. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's one starts in place. It's... Yeah, that is a uh, bit strange. All right, let's let's go back to uh, Citizen Con um, expectations. I want to hear about ships. We, we, they've kind of been talking about a lot of ships. I did a count yesterday on my other podcast about. Uh, you guys think there's going to be any surprises in terms of ships?